Welcome to Gunsmoke Theater. I'm Dennis Daly. Very few radio or television programs had such an impact on their medium that they changed everything. One of those shows was Gunsmoke. Yes, it ran 20 years on television, but the TV show was a child of the radio show, which itself ran nearly a decade. Sit back now for the next hour as we go back into the archives and play some of those great episodes of the show that changed everything, Gunsmoke. In our look at Gunsmoke, we've started at the very beginning, and we've listened to the audition shows and then realized that the project was shelled for three years before it finally debuted in the spring of 1952. In our last installment, we heard Georgia Ellis join the cast as Kitty and began to realize that CBS had such a wonderful collection of actors who would show up repeatedly week after week. I want you to, in this episode, start listening to the background sounds, the sound patterns as they were called, and realize the loving care that went into the production of Gunsmoke. This episode from the 13th of September in the initial year, 1952. Around Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. They told us a man we'd been looking for, a murderer, was in a cow camp on the north fork of the Canadian River, about a hundred miles south of Dodge. So Chester and I rode down to take a look. We found a fellow there with a right name but the wrong face. So we started back. First night, we camped in a dry, buffalo-rutted depression. The next morning, I woke shortly after daybreak to find Chester already cooking breakfast. Morning, Mr. Dillon. Uh, Meat will be done soon. Uh, this is a coffee made, Chester. That's what I need. Yeah, uh, boiling. I didn't make much, though. I thought I'd better save our water. You know, Chester, I'll bet right now the doc's back there in St. Louis holed up in some fancy hotel and still asleep. Hmm. That's quite a thought, sir. Yeah. Him right in the middle of St. Louis and us way out here on the prairie. <laughs> I'll bet he's even got sheets on his bed. I wouldn't be surprised, Mr. Dillon. Doc said this was one vacation he was going to splurge on. <laughs> he's riding the Santa Fe both ways. Uh huh. Well, meat's done. I cleaned off this rock here to cut it on. Oh, good. Oh, well, you got it warm anyway. Well, now, meat shouldn't be overcooked, Mr. Dillon. That takes a taste clean out of it. Now, then we ought to be able to taste everything about this steer. Eggman's disappointment. How's that, Mr. Dillon? <laughs> Never mind, Chester. Now, how come you woke up so early this morning? Oh, I always do. Seems as soon as it gets daylight, my feet start to sweat, and then I just got to get up. <laughs> well, that's as good a reason as any, I guess. Wow. Looks like we got company, Chester. What? Oh, where? Right out there, heading straight for us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some cowboy, probably. I don't know. He doesn't ride quite like a cowboy. Why, it's just a kid, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> sure needs a haircut. <laughs> what? Say, Mr. Dillon, it's a girl. Now, what could she be doing out here? I'm carrying a rifle, too. Well, uh, get on, miss, and have some coffee. 
Who are you, mister? Hi, this is Chester Proudfoot, and I'm Matt Dillon. How do you do? You rustlers, or what? Uh, not exactly. I'm the U.S. Marshal out of Dodge, ma'am. U.S. Marshal? Oh, that's good. It is? Why? I need help, Mr. Marshal. My daddy's awful sick. Sick? Well, where is your daddy? We got a homestead about a mile over that rise back there. Oh, what's he sick with? It's his leg, Mr. Marshal. A horse threw him and his saddle both in the corral, and then it stepped on his foot. And now his whole leg's all funny. He's got a fever, too. Mr. Dillon, that sounds like... Yeah, I know, Chester. Uh, tell me, Miss, when the horse stepped on him, did it cut his foot, uh, break the skin anywhere? Just a scratch. He tore his boot off, though. Oh. Please, Mr. Marshall, please come see him. I'm scared, the way his leg is and everything. Well, sure, sure we'll come. Your mother with him now? I don't have a mother, Mr. Marshall. Oh. Well, then, what are you doing out here if your daddy's sick? We ran out of meat about three days ago, and I don't have anything to feed him. Oh. All right. Uh, Chester, I'll ride back with the... Uh, what is your name, anyway? Tara. Tara Hentry. Oh. I'll be 16 next January. Well, that's, that's fine. Uh, we'll go back to the Hantry place, Chester. You scout around for some meat. All right, sir. And if you don't find any antelope, shoot the first calf you see. Anybody's calf. I'll do it, Mr. Dillon. He's in the sleeping room, Mr. Marshall. No. Daddy. <laughs> I, Daddy, I found a man, and he's going to help us. And, Daddy, he's a marshal, a U.S. marshal. Matt Dillon, Mr. Hentry. Uh, uh, how are you feeling? Dillon? Oh, I've heard of you. You're from Dodge, aren't you? <laughs> That's right. Well, Marshal, I... I ain't feeling so good. My my foot don't hurt no more, but it and my leg is all sort of... Well, it ain't pretty. I don't know much about these things, but maybe I better take a look at it anyway, huh? Sure. Sure, Marshal. There. There she is. Uh, all right, you can cover it up. I was in the war, Marshal. I know what gangrene is. Guess you do, too, huh? Uh, yeah. Well, the first thing, a friend of mine is out getting you some meat, and then we'll load you in your wagon. Well, and we'll... Ben took the wagon. What? Ben Walling. He took the wagon when Daddy got hurt. Said he'd find a doctor and bring him back. Well, who's Ben Walling? Oh, he, he's been sort of working here, Mr. Marshall. I should have run him off long ago. That's what. Well, where is he? What'd he take the wagon for? Where's he going to find a doctor around here anyway? Closest doctors in Dodge, I know of. Yeah, and he's in St. Louis, and he won't be back for a couple of weeks. Uh, I couldn't get to him anyway. Well, tell me, when did this happen? About six days ago, Mr. Marshall. Uh -huh. Ben left the day after. Well, you think he's coming back? Did he steal the wagon or what? He he comes back here and me not able to get around. I, I don't know what I'll do. I ought to take a bull with take now, him. Now, take it easy, Mr. Just Hand. Bull take him. He won't cause any trouble, so don't you get all worked up. Uh, Tara, we'll uh, let him get some rest, huh? All right. Uh, we'll have some food for you soon, Mr. Hantry. I ain't very hungry. Tara, what's he so riled up about this Ben Walling for? What's between them? Oh, it's, it's nothing, Mr. Marshall. Daddy's sick and... That's all. Look, Tara, you asked me to help you, didn't you? Yes, but... You trust me, don't you? All right, Mr. Marshall. Daddy hates Ben because Ben... Well, Ben likes me. Oh, I see. He even wanted to marry me. Said he would. How do you feel about Ben, Terry? You like him? No. Of course, it's time I had a man and all that, but... I'm afraid of Ben, Mr. Marshall. It's like there's something wrong with him. He's always sneaking around when you don't expect him. 
makes me uneasy, like. Well, we won't worry about Ben now. Uh, you you stay here in case your daddy wants anything. I'll go outside and wait for Chester. Mr. Marshall. Hmm? I'm awful glad you're here. We'll see it through, Tara. Don't you worry. I won't. Now. <laughs> went outside and walked over to the small corral that stood nearby. There I rolled a smoke and looked out across the flat distances of the prairie. And I wondered how anyone could survive in all that emptiness. Hantry, lying on his bed back there in the house. He wouldn't survive. The prairie got to him all right. And its vast loneliness had put him out of reach of any help. And Tara... What could she do out here in this endless land of grass? I was glad to get my mind off it when Chester rode in with an antelope across his saddle. We hung it on the corral, dressed it, took a hind quarter at Tara, and we went back outside and sat down. Yes, sir. She's a plucky girl, Mr. Young. Yeah, fine girl, Chester. Yeah, but this Ben fella, I just don't understand his going off with the wagon like that. Well, it doesn't matter much now. And tree won't last more than a day or two, anyway. It's that bad, is it? Yeah, blood poisoning, Chester. As soon as it reaches his heart, he's done for. Well, isn't there any way to stop it? Yeah, sure. Cut his leg off. Oh. Too bad Doc isn't here. Yeah. Would that stop it, Mr. Dillon? Uh, cutting his leg off, I mean? I don't know, Chester. I don't know. Maybe too late, anyway. I well, I sure wish we could do something for him. I don't take to just sitting around and waiting for a man to die. And nobody does. It isn't right somehow, that, that poor fella and, and Tara. Why, why, Mr. Dillon, that girl will go crazy out here all alone. All right, Chester, what do you want me to do about it? I'm not a doctor. Now shut up. Well, I... Mr. Dillon, you could do it. I know you could. Do what? Be a doctor. Long enough to save Mr. Hantry's life. Are you anyway. out of your head? No, sir. Then what are you talking like that for? The most I ever did was doctor a horse for the colic. That's fine training for this, isn't I it? I know. I couldn't do it. I just plain don't have the spirit. But you do. Oh, why didn't I leave you back in Dodge? It wouldn't have mattered anyway, Mr. Dillon, because you would never just stand by and let a man die. Let's go talk to him, Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Daddy's fever is worse, Mr. Marshall. I I'm going to get some more water. Yeah. How do you feel, Mr. Hendry? I don't feel much, Marshall. Outside of burning up. I've been trying to tell Tara I just can't last long with blood poisoning. She's just got to figure on it. Well, that's what I came to talk to you about. I... I guess you know the only thing that'll give you a chance. I know. I've been thinking about it. But I couldn't ask any man to do that. You didn't ask me. Well, it's up to you, Mr. Hantry. I'll, I'll try it if you're willing. Only thing is, I... I won't know much about what I'm doing. i seen it done in the Union Army, Marshal. I could tell you some things. All right. The only thing is, Marshal... I don't know I'd be much use around here with one leg. Well, you'll have to decide that for yourself. I know. You could move to town, Mr. Hendry, you and Tara. That's it, Tara. If it was just me, I wouldn't do it, but I can't leave Tara alone. Now, if I can help it, I, I can't. Uh, all right, Marshal. Let's do it. You're a brave man. No. No, Marshal. I just don't have any choice. Come on. Let's get it over with. You got any liquor in the house? There's a jug of corn out in the kitchen. Get it, Chester. 
You can start drinking it while we're getting everything else ready. Tell Tara to start boiling a lot of water. Yeah. I'll talk to her in a few minutes. I'll be right back. Now, I want you to tell me everything that you know about this, Mr. Hendry. First, I'll tell you what you'll need. Mm -hmm. There's a straight iron out by the corral somewhere. Yeah. You can heat it in the main room fireplace. Right. Now, what else? Tara will find some cloth for bandages. And the rest of the stuff you can get in the kitchen. Uh-huh. The only thing worrying me is what will we use to tie off the arteries with? Plain thread won't hold. Well, uh, uh, maybe some thin strips of raw hide. No, they, they'd soak through. you got to have something. No, I, that... I know. At least I think it'll work. What about horse hair? Oh, that's it, Marshal. Pull it off the tail. Uh-huh. It'll work fine. Here's Judge Hantry, and I brought you a cup, too. Pour me some. Oh, I want to get good and drunk. Here you are, Mr. Hantry. Frank. Frank. You know, I ain't been drunk in the daytime since we got the news about... President Lincoln in the spring of 65. Uh, you'd better have your talk with Tara before that takes hold. Ask her to come in, will you? Come on, Chester. we got work to do. Yes, sir. Uh, good luck, Mr. Hantree. Thanks. Well, uh, Mar- Marshal? Yeah. Marshal? I'll try to make it easy for you. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Shortly after noon, I operated. Whether it was the corn whiskey or his own hard courage, I don't know, but Hantry never whimpered. Chester stood outside the door and brought me whatever I needed. Tara waited in the kitchen, boiling more water and making her own thoughts. Maybe it was harder on her than any of us. And toward the end, Hantry mercifully passed out. When I'd finally finished bandaging him, I was kind of faint myself. I'd done everything I could. I just hoped I'd done it right. How is he, Mr. Dillon? You'll have to clean up in there, Chester. I've got to get outside for some air. Yes, sir, I'll do it. And put that fire out. It's hot enough around here. I don't know how you did it, Mr. Dillon. Tara? Uh, Tara, will you come on outside for a while? Is Daddy all right? Is he all right, Mr. Marshall? It's all over, Tara. We'll just have to wait and see now. <laughs> all right. There now, Tara. He's all right. I'm sorry. And it took so long. I I thought you'd never finish. It, it didn't feel much, Tara. The corn liquor worked fine. Fine. Will he get well now? Well, I, I hope so, Tara. I, I hope so. Mr. Marshall, are, are you going to wait and see? Oh, now, Tara, you don't have to worry about that, Chester, and I'll be here as long as you need us. I I just wanted to be sure. Can I can I go see Daddy now? Well, uh, as soon as Chester comes out, Tara, uh, then you can. All right. I'll wait, Mister Marshall. Mr. Dillon, how he can just lay there so quiet and peaceful. It's only been four or five hours, Chester. The liquor hasn't worn off yet. He drank nearly the whole jug. No, he needed it. Uh, Say, Mr. Dillon, look yonder. Huh? Somebody coming with a wagon. Oh, yeah. It's probably that Ben Walling they were talking about. I'll bet that's who it is, all right. Wonder what he'll have to say for himself. 
Ah, you'll think of something, Chester. His kind always do. You recognize him? No, sir. Do you? Oh, I never saw him before. Hello. What are you doing here? You've been walling. How'd you know? The hand trees. They've been wondering about you. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, he's old hand tree, anyway. He's all right. He is, huh? You've been gone a long time, Ben. Where were you? I don't know you, mister, but you sure ask a lot of questions. You can answer them one at a time. Now, where were you? Who are you, anyway, mister? I'm a U.S. Marshal. Ben. There no U.S. Marshals around there here. There is now. Generally, I'm in Dodge. Is your name Dillon? It is. What are you doing here, Marshal? Terror ran into us, asked us to help. Seems the only able-bodied man around here took off in a wagon. I went to fetch your doctor. Is anything wrong in that? Not at all. Where is he? Well, first night the horses ran away, and I've been chasing them ever since. I didn't catch him till this morning. And then I've been gone so long, I thought I'd better get back to you right away. I was worried about Tara and old Hantry, of course. I see. Well, you better get your horses on hitch, Ben. You can see Tara later. She's in with her father now. Gonna be all right, huh? I was kind of worried about that foot. Looked to me like it might have poison in it. It did. What do you mean, it did? I took his leg off about noon today. You what? Mr. Dillon did it all by himself, just like a regular doctor. Oh, but how'd you know what to do? You might have killed him. Somebody had to do it, Ben. It's a sure thing Tara couldn't. You're blaming me, ain't you? Well, I did everything I could. It isn't my fault those blasted horses run off. And Trey's pretty sick, Ben. I wouldn't bother him for a day or two if I were you. Oh, I won't bother you. Oh, now look, Marshal. You can leave now. I'll handle everything here. We'll leave. As soon as Hantree's able to take care of himself again. All right. Stay as long as you like. I don't care. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. I think that Ben is a no-good liar. You're right on both counts, Chester. I'll tell you something else. You see that saddle over there? Well, that belongs to Mr. Hantree. Yeah, I know. I looked at it this noon. Somebody cut the cinch strap on it. Cut the cinch strap? Mm-hmm. No wonder that bronc bucked him and the saddle off bull. Well, do you think Tara did it? Oh, my goodness gracious, no, Mr. Dillon. Tara would never do a thing like that to her own... It was Ben, wasn't it? That'd be my guess. He figured the old man would get hurt, maybe killed. Why, sir? So he'd have a free hand with Tara. Why is that low down... Mr. Dillon, let me arrest him. Not yet, Chester. There's plenty of time. All right, sir. I'll wait. There wasn't as much time as I figured. Antree had a bad night, and by morning he was so weak he couldn't lift his head. I tried to take his pulse, but I could hardly find it. Maybe, maybe I'd operated too late. Maybe the poison had already moved up into his body. I didn't know. I had no way of knowing so there was nothing to do now but wait. Once more coffee, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, thank you, Chester. We'll fill it up, huh? Tara won't eat anything at all, sir. She just sits there by his bed, hasn't slept a wink, I know of. Well, it's her father, Chester. He's all she's got. I never thought much about it before, Mr. Dillon, but seeing Tara, I kind of wish I had a daughter. You'd have to change your profession if you were going to take care of a daughter, Chester. Why, uh, I don't have any profession, Mr. Dillon. Oh, Mr. Marshall. Uh, yeah, what is it, Tara? Please, please come. Daddy wants you. I, I think he, he's... You better come, too, Chester. Yes, sir. It's Matt Dillon, Mr. Hantry. Can you hear me? Marshall. I can't hold out no more. Now, don't say that. You keep fighting, man. You'll pull through. No, Marshal. I'm going to die. Oh, Daddy. Daddy. Tara. It's about Tara, Marshal. Don't leave her here. Ben Walling. He's no good. He'll try to keep her. Now, don't you worry about Ben Walling, Mr. Hendry. I promise you he won't get anywhere near Tara. Now or ever. Thanks, Marshal. 
She's a bad one. Tara can't stay here alone. She can't work this place. It's a bad way to die. Not no. Now, I want you to listen to me. Listen to me, now. Yeah. I promise you something else, too. I'll take care of Tara. I'll see she's all right. I'll see she's cared for. Now, I promise that. I thank you, Marshal. I sure. Where's Tara? Daddy. I'm right here. Daddy. Tara. Come on, Chester. Daddy. Daddy. Mr. Dillon, I don't think they'd have made out on this place anyway. Why not, Chester? Well, there just isn't enough water. That one little old spring is all I've got. Well, if they had a lake, it'd still be too much for Tara. What are we going to do with her, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. We'll have to think of something, though. My, I wish she'd come out of that house. I don't like it, her in there breaking her heart. Give her a little time, Chester. She, she'll be all right. Don't you move her finger, either one of you. Well, well, you're mighty careless with that rifle, Ben. Now get smart with me, Marshal. I know what I'm doing. And what would that be? I heard you in there. Heard you promise you'd take Tara away. I was right by the window. I heard it all. You got a curious way of courting the girl, Ben, trying to kill her father. Yeah, and I saw you yesterday looking at that saddle, but I didn't kill him, Marshal. You did. That's a lie, Ben Walling, and well, you, you know it. Up. I won't shut up. If we'd have just got here sooner, Mr. Dillon would have saved him, that's all. Yeah. It's too bad you got here at all. Because you're going to die for it. Both of you. Put the gun down, Ben. You're under arrest for attempted murder. You stay right where you are, Marshal. You know, I have an idea you've smelled powder before, Ben, and that you're afraid of it. Marshal? I have an idea that's why you tried to get Hantry like you did instead of facing it. Stop, sir. And right now, you wish you didn't have that rifle at all, don't you, Ben? Because I might have to shoot you no. for it, huh? No, don't. Marshal, Give me stop. that. <laughs> You all right, Mr. Dillon? He didn't even try, Chester. Rifle went off when I knocked it aside. That's all he was scared to death. Well, I, I didn't feel exactly comfortable. Well, tie him up and keep an eye on him. I'll go see Tara. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Late that evening, we buried Hantry out on the prairie, out in back of the little homestead. They would die now, too fall apart without him. The next morning, we loaded everything we could get into the wagon. With Tara beside me, we started out for Dodge. Ben Wallen never said a word. Chester led his horse, and they rode along ahead of us. I had plenty of time to tell Tara all about Dodge and how there were some good people there and how we'd find her a home and a family. She sat there tight lip. She didn't say much. But she never once looked back. the things I think that's interesting to note from the initial run, the initial year of Gunsmoke, is how William Conrad did a lot of narration. That was always the case, but in the very beginning, Gunsmoke owed a little bit of its heritage to those old detective shows, in which the star always spoke in the first person. Of course, the quintessential example of that would be yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now the second of our two shows from September of 1952. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke.
Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. <laughs> Pecos. Cottonwood Pond is just over the rise ahead of us. Well, it may be dry, too. Bet they haven't hit a rain on the prairie for six months. It won't be dry. I've been bringing cattle up here to Dodge City for 12 years. Drought or no drought, the pond's always had water. It better have. We're losing 15 head an hour now. We can't push them much further. It'll be water. With luck... If the railroad's got the cars for us, we can start loading this afternoon. By this time... Hey, sounds like the boys up ahead run into something. Yeah, come on. There's a pond, Pecos. Plenty of water. Yeah, I guess you were right. Wonder why the herd's piling up. They ought to be stampeding for that pond. You'd think you have to... Hold up, Hagan. A barbed wire fence. Somebody's fenced off the pond. Mr. Jackson, it looks like we've got a fight on our hands. Things get too quiet and dodge, it always means a blow-up's coming. Yeah, just sit down, Matt. You're just getting yourself a case of nerves. Yeah. You've been a law officer too long. Shot at too many times. <laughs> you're getting so you just act like a spooky old horse. You're jumpy and you're gun-shy. Uh, hand me those forceps for you. Oh, yeah. You mean this? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Now, you take me, Matt. I... I don't rant and rail against fate. I just sit back and take what comes. Yeah, sure. No. Mm-hmm. If I get a patient, fine. I steal him blind. And if I don't, well, I keep my hand in, setting a broken leg on a dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that splint ought to hold him. Uh, matter of fact, I could use a fee or two. Not planning to shoot anybody, are you, Matt? Yeah, if this drought doesn't break, I'm in the mood to shoot myself. Uh, that's a bad one, all right. I don't think I've ever seen the prairie as dry as it is this year. Oh, there you are, Mr. Dillon. Well, come on in, Chester. I've been looking all over for you. We've got trouble, Mr. Dillon. Huh? Trouble? Old man Howard just sent a rider in. A trail drive's pulled in from the Big Bend. They're threatening to cut his fences so they can water the cattle at Cottonwood Pond. Well, as you blow up, Matt, a real head-on smash. A thirsty herd against that skin, Flint Howard. Uh, uh, I bet I could get myself a few fees out of this before it's over. <laughs> Good old Doc, always hoping for the best. Huh? Now, come on, Chester, let's ride out to Cottonwood. <laughs> Howard had no call to fence that pond, Mr. Dillon. There's enough water there for all the trail herds in the next ten years. That's on his ranch, Chester. He's got a right to fence his own range. Got a right, maybe, but no decent rancher would take advantage of it. Howard's mean. Just downright mean. Now, I think it's more than that, Chester. It's the old business of making two dollars grow where one dollar grew before. I think Howard figured on something like this when he strung that fence last month. But the trouble look, is that... Would... Look, look yonder, Mr. Dillon. Huh? Must be 50 or 60 riders facing each other across that fence. Yeah. Looks like a couple of armies. Well, that wouldn't be the first range war that started over water rights. Come on. Now put away the guns! The part 
Strike's over. Who says so, mister? I do. Who are you? Dillon, U.S. Marshal out of Dodge. Marshal, that man and his gang are threatening to break through my fences and trespass on my property. I demand the protection of the law. You get it, Howard. You the owner of this herd? That's right, Marshal. Jack Jackson from the Circle Z spread down in the Big Bend. Maybe you can make this fellow see reason. I got a herd of cattle here that's dying like flies for lack of water. Over there, a hundred yards is plenty of water. Only a sneaking crook has fenced it in. How about it, Marshal? Well, it's his land, Jackson. The law gives him the right to fence it. Law? Right. Everything I got in the world's tied up in that herd. There are 25 trail riders there in the saddle. I can't even pay wages to if I lose these cattle. Does the law uphold pushing a man against the wall and wiping him out? It wasn't intended to. Howard, why don't you ride up here to the fence and talk, huh? Uh, sure, Marshal. No objections at all. My fence, ain't it? Well, nobody's doubting it. Now, look, is there any reason why you can't get together with this man and let him take that herd in and water it? I made him an offer. He turned an it down. An offer. A dollar a head a day for water, or buy the herd himself for three dollars a head. That's a pretty stiff terms, Howard. Better than losing everything like he's going to do. Why, you dirty All right, hold it, both of you. Now, look, if there's any gunslinging starts, I'm going to be in on it, too. You understand? <laughs> Bad liquor or a busted straight? Oh, neither, neither. How are you? Eager. But you've probably noticed that before. Seriously, though, what's wrong? Plenty. One of the bloodiest little range wars you ever saw is just about to break. Out of Cottonwood Pond, I heard about it. Did you hear, too, that I'm back on the wrong side? Here, pull a stool up to the bar. Harry, a drink for Mr. Uh, Dillon. No, thanks. I can't stay, Kitty. I gotta try to round up some deputies and try is probably about as far as I'm gonna get. Old Ton will be siding with the Texas boys against Howard and against me. Maybe you ought to switch sides, Matt. Oh, sure, sure, I ought to, I know, but I can't. If I started making my own rules, it'd mean the end of law and order in Dodge City. Yeah, I just can't do it, Kitty. Much as I'd like to. Well. Not for me to say. You're the one who has to decide. Uh, Yeah, Chester. What did you find out? Mr. Hightower down at the railroad depot checked clear through to Topeka. They can't get enough cattle cars here to load that herd out before day after tomorrow. Well, that's that. It was an outside chance anyway. I just can't do it, Kitty. Much as I'd like to. Well, not for me to say. You're the one who has to decide. Uh, Yeah, Chester. What'd you find out? Mr. Hightower down at the railroad depot checked clear through to Topeka. They can't get enough cattle cars here to load that herd out before day after tomorrow. Well, that's that. It was an outside chance anyway. I thought we might load them up fast, Kitty, and run them up to Walnut Creek. It's still got a little water in it. But I... Matt, there's something wrong with a law that upholds a low-down scheme like this. Well, what Howard's doing is wrong morally, but it's right legally i got to find a legal way to stop him. I'll bet a lawyer could find a way of some kind. Too bad this town doesn't have one. Oh, heaven forbid. Just the same matter. Yeah, what is it? My name's Fenton. I'm range boy. Yeah, I know. You work for Dyke Howard. Well, what's on your mind? Well, Mr. Howard figures you ought to be arranging to protect his property. Jackson gave me his word he'd lay off until nine tonight. His word, sure. But Mr. Howard figures it'd be a good idea if you deputize his riders. Fenton, get up. Wait a second, Martin. Go on, get up. When I want Howard's advice, I'll ask for it. Now go tell him that. Well, yeah, but... Go on, get up. Move. his riders. <laughs> sure he like that. Well, it just may come to that, Mr. Dillon. I couldn't get anybody else. Fellow. 
You know, I ought to throw this badge away and go out there and help Jackson cut that fence. Matt, I still think what you ought yeah, to do... Yeah, I know, I know. I ought to get a lawyer. Well... Well, Kitty, the only lawyer Dodge City ever saw was that young fellow from Boston who died here last year on his way... Hey. What is it, Matt? Chester, what happened to those books of his? Well, nobody never claimed them. They're still in the back of the jail there somewhere. Oh, it's a long shot, but... <laughs> Kitty, I love you. Matt. Come on, Chester, let's find those books. Uh, I don't know, Chester. Take a man a year just to learn what these words mean. Well, I sure can't help you, Mr. Dillon. Looky there. Tort. Replevin. Statutory malfeasance. Why don't they write the laws out in English? There'd be no work for lawyers. Huh? The only thing that might do it is this one. I'm not too sure what it means. Uh, uh, evening, Matt. Oh, Doc. Come on in here, will you? Uh, uh, I figured I'd bring you a little courage for the battle. What? Uh, might be snakes out at Cottonwood Pond. <laughs> It's very thoughtful. <laughs> yes, sir. Calamo and Irish whiskey. No doctor west of the Mississippi ought to be without him. Uh, the calamo's for the woman, you understand? <laughs> yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Of course, a bottle of Jameson might not cure a patient, but it sure makes him enjoy his illness. Yeah. Look, uh, Doc, you've been to school. Uh, at least I guess you have. Oh, well, uh, I browsed through a couple. Well, listen to this now. Now, tell me what you think about this paragraph right here. Huh? Uh, well, let me see. A schedule of territorial ordinances and judicial precedents. Handbook for local administrators. Uh, well, I didn't go to law school, man. No, no, but you put red books and you know big words. Now, now listen to this. The local administrator or other duly constituted authority in a territorial division is hereby empowered to declare a state of acute emergency in case of riot, rebellion, or any natural catastrophe which threatens the general welfare. Now, Doc, would you say I'm a duly constituted authority, huh? Well, in Dodge City, I guess you're about the only authority. Yeah. Now, now, would you say this drought we're having is a threat to the general welfare? Well, I've never seen a worse one, but... All right, now, listen understand. to this. Yeah? During the period of such emergency, the officer in charge is authorized to seize, confiscate, allocate, or otherwise administer critical materials and facilities in accordance with a common need and his own discretion. All right, Matt. Water is a material. Yeah. And as far as keeping cattle alive is concerned, Cottonwood Pond is a facility. <laughs> That's all I wanted to know. I don't see how it'll help you, though, Matt. How it'll never stand for it. You're still going to have a pitched battle on your hands. Maybe so, Doc. But at least I'll be fighting in the way I want to fight. Well, come on, Chester. Let's go. It's 8 o'clock. <laughs> That's dark now. Must be pushing nine o'clock. Hope they don't jump the gun on us, Chester. I figure Jackson will stick by his word, Mr. Dillon. If Howard lets him. You know, we might get a break in this drought if that storm comes this way. No, I'd say it's only heat lightning. All thunder and no rain. Well, if it goes on a few more weeks, this prairie will be dried right down to the nub. All right. Hold it. Pull up them horses. He's right there by the fence, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I see him. Who's there? Well, speak up. I usually answer bushwhackers with a six gun. This is your lucky night, Fenton. Oh, Marshal, I, I didn't know. Where's your boss? I'm right here, Dillon. About time you got here. That mob may try to rush the fence any minute now. Not yet, Howard. I said nine o'clock. You've got five minutes yet. Come on over here, Jackson. I want you to hear this, too. I kind of wish you'd stayed out of it, Marshal. Rather not have fought against you. Never mind. Mr. Howard, by the authority vested in me as a U.S. Marshal, and under the territorial laws and ordinances of the United States, I'm hereby declaring a state of acute emergency due to the drought. What are you talking about, Dillon? The U.S. Territorial Ordinance Schedule of 1858, Section 721C. 
What are you trying to say? Just this. For the duration of the emergency, I am taking charge of Cottonwood Pond in the name of the United States government. And I'm allocating use of it to Mr. Jackson here to water his herd. Now, if you want to try to make a deal with him, you got five minutes before I cut the wire and open the fence. I've never bought water before, but I'll give you ten cents a head, Howard. How about it? I'll see you dead first. And I'll be struck dead myself before I see one head of your stock onto my property. Dylan, I don't know what's behind this move. Maybe you've sold out, made a deal of your own. Easy, Howard. If not that, then you've lost your mind. Your five minutes are running out now. What are you going to do? Fight. What do you think I'm going to do? Going to resist the law? You call it the law? I don't. Dylan, I'm giving my boys orders to shoot any man who lays a hand on this fence. And that goes for you. Listen to me, Howard. You got a chance to do something that costs you nothing and means life or death to somebody else. And you're refusing to do it. Well, I'm sorry to see it that way. But in any case, this herd gets water. Maybe they will. All right, boys, you heard it. Keep that fence covered. If they want to fight, they'll get one. Jackson, I guess I'm going to need some deputies. Well, I got 25 men here, Marshal. They're yours if you want them. All right, boys. Will you all raise your right hands? Do you swear to uphold the Constitution, ordinances, and bylaws of the United States to the best of your ability, so help you? I do. All right, you're all temporary deputy marshals acting under my orders. Now bunch the cattle in this way and start them through the fence as soon as I open the wire. They won't need much starting, Marshal. They've been smelling that water for hours. Now don't shoot unless you're fired on. If you are, protect yourselves and your herd. All right, let's go. Pickers! Keep those flankers closing them in toward the opening here. They crowd on that fence, they'll cut themselves to ribbon. All right, boss. Over this way. Chester, way. come here, man. Yes, sir. You got the wire cutters? Here you are, Mr. Dillon. You know, I think we got a fight on our hands. Yeah, I guess. All right, keep me covered. I'll watch the left over here. All right, Mr. Jackson. Well... There's one strand left. They're cutting the fence, Mr. Howard. Let's stop All right, fire at the flash, Chester. Yes, sir. Oh, my gracious, I wish there was a moon. There's one more strand. I spotted him. And here's the last one. All right, boys, the fence is open. Bring them through. Come on through, boys. Come on. Heads up, Chester. They won't give in this season. Yeah, you can hear them out there, but you can't see for the dust. Yeah. Wind's coming up off that cloud. Well, come on. Let's try to find Howard. I'm going to take him in for attempted murder. Last time I heard him, he was down along the fence here, Summers. All right, boys! Fire the glass! What the... You got... Look! Look at them torches, Mr. Dillon. They're a satin fire in the grass. Yeah. As dry as it is, they'll start the whole prairie blazing. Jackson! Get your herd through the fence. They're trying to stampede it. It'll take more than fire to turn those cattle away from water. I guess you're right. Look, send as many of your boys as you can to help me. We gotta get that fire stopped and fast. <laughs> Backfire holds that we're we're winning, Chester. Otherwise, couldn't have been a worse time. The prairie's dry as gunpowder. Well, at least the herd's safe. They wouldn't leave that pond if the whole world caught fire. Any orders for the boys, Mister Dillon? Uh, yeah, just have them keep working along the edge of the backfire, Pick us Speed out any sparks that get across. Huh? Right, Marshal. I got you. Uh, have you seen anything of the Howard gang? Oh, not a sign. I guess they figured they'd done all they could. Yeah, maybe. Mr. Dillon, I'd swear a storm's going to break. I, I can halfway smell the rain. I don't know about that, Chester. But it's doing one thing that won't help us. What do you mean? Look, the wind's shifting. 
starting to drive those flames across the backfire. Well, if it catches air again, it'll get clear away from us. Yeah, it sure will. Now, come on. Let's grab some of the boys and start working behind it. Yes, Let's go, Zulin. Well, Fenton, I figured you'd be halfway to the Mexican border by now. Well, you figured wrong. You keep your hands still, both of you. One move and it's your last move. That's about the way you planned it anyway, isn't it? You wiped us out, Dylan. That backfire of yours took the ranch house and the barns. There's nothing for us to do now but drift. Only first, I'm going to kill you. Hit the dirt, Chester. Fenton, drop the gun. You're under arrest. I'm dropping you dirt. Dylan. Dylan, I... Well, you warned him, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, it doesn't matter much now. Look, Chester. Yes, sir. It, it's jumped the backfire. With that wind driving it, it'll burn the whole prairie from here clear to the river. And Dodge City along with it. Not a way in the world of stopping it either. Heard the shot, Marshal. You all right? I'm sick at my stomach, that's all. Dodge City's going to burn, Jackson, and there's nothing we can do. I sure didn't figure on this. I'll let him have the herd, gladly. No, it's my fault. I should have jumped him first. A man does what he has to, Marshal. I don't think that's your way. Well, maybe my way's the wrong way. When it leads to burning 10,000 acres of prairie in a whole town, there must be something Wait, wrong. Wait, Mr. Dillon. What is it, Chester? I told you, I, I told you, I could smell it. Smell what? What the devil is... Great. Yes, sir. By heavens, it's starting to rain. Come on, Chester, let's find our horses. It, it's sure not letting up any, Mr. Dillon. No. We're still quite a ways from town. Uh, let's swing over along the bluff, Chester, and find a place to wait it off for a while, huh? That's what I was hoping you'd say. Come on. Well, it took a long time to break loose, but it's sure making up for a lot. Wow. I never saw a lightning this before. Uh, now, usually, lets up once the rain starts. I guess it's just a freak storm anyway. Uh, uh, off your horse, Chester. Flat on the ground. Uh, I saw a flash, Mr. Dillon. It come from that lone cottonwood tree. Yeah. It's a bad spot. He's got covered and we haven't. Well, I guess we found out what happened to Mr. Howard. All right, Howard. Come out with your hands up. You're under arrest. Why don't you come and get me, Dylan? I'm going to flip a shot at the tree, Chester. Roll away as soon as I fire. Yes, sir. All right. Now. Smart, Dylan. But not smart enough. That was close. There's enough light for him to see. He's got all the odds. If he keeps it up, he'll get us sure. Maybe we might just as well rush him, Mr. Dillon. We haven't got much to lose. That's an outside chance, Chester. That he's bound to get one of us. Yeah, but this way it's both. Yeah, I know. All right. We'll go in on the count of three. And out and move fast. Yes, sir. And, uh... Good luck, Chester. Same to you, Mr. Dillon. All right. One, two, three. Mr. Dillon, what happened? It was lightning. It struck the tree. I think Howard's lying over there on the ground. Come on. Down, all right. He said he'd be struck dead before he'd ever give in. Well, he was. By heaven, I don't know. It was the second time tonight. <laughs> you know, Chester, I think I'm going to change my ways. <laughs> Gunsmoke is maturing. Two episodes from the fall of 1952. And that's it for this time around. I'm Dennis Daly. Thanks for joining me on Gunsmoke Theater as we go back into the archives to play more 
of the episodes of the radio show that changed everything for the better. Gunsmoke, right here on YouTube.